I finally finished my base wrap. Look at it, look at it. It's super soft now. Wow. And now that I've finished my base wrap, I'm actually looking for new mastering gear. So let's check something out. Now the mastering gear that I'm looking for is not like the usual stuff. Can't come up with a brand name right now. No, I'm looking for that vintage, uh, you know, mastering stuff, that British stuff, the the stuff from the from the transfer console from Abbey Road, and that's cool. I don't need to get the equipment in here because Waves makes it in software package. Look at this! Look at this! A modular mastering chain plugin modeled after the EMI TG. 12410 transfer console used in all Abbey Road's mastering suites since the early 70s to this day. Actually, that's true. That's actually true that they are still using that gear. I, I know uh, one mastering engineer from Abbey Road. He works on that console on a daily basis. That's amazing. Key features integral part of Abbey Road sound since the early 1970s to the present day. Five modules that can be used independently. User mastering or a mixing session. 40 decibels per octave linear or face sidechain filters. Why do you want a linear face filter on your sidechain? Is there a mathematician that can comment why I should actually want to have linear face on a sidechain? Meter bridge component provides a new approach to metering. More than just the original sound with a new compressor design, side chain filters and a meter bridge. Stereo, DO, mid side processing, stereo mono, left, right, mid side processing modes. Hmm? Stereo, DO, it's the same thing. Live component, what's the live component? Now we, now we can look at the demo, but we can also just try it out ourselves because that's a cool thing about plugins and software in general. This is where software wins from hardware. You can always get a demo. There aren't that many situations where you can't get a demo. Let's. Look at this thing while using the track called Sandstorm by an artist called Darude. And this time we are using the funky edit. Now, first the meter bridge. Those LED bars, were they on the original console? They look, they look pretty, pretty freaky, pretty cool, but 1970s? I don't know. These meters, they look pretty good, those, those needle, needle stuff meters, but you have to calibrate them with that little screw thingy. So you never know if you're correct. Yeah, so let's leave this thing opened above my head and move on to the real stuff, the uh, uh, mastering console. Now, the first thing that I want to highlight, if you're buying, uh, you know, this uh, this thing uh, or first get a demo, you have to uh, watch out for uh, paint chips. So if your paint is chipped, for instance, over here, there are some, you know, the paint's a bit chipped. There is some paint missing. Here, there's also some paint over here and here. This doesn't look like a big issue on the faceplate of, of such a plugin, but if they made it as realistic as possible, they would also have cloned the, the humidity of the air, and that would mean that you would get rusty rusty uh, faceplates, uh, you know, soon, because, you know, the paint has chipped. And, and as we all know, you are getting rust on the places where paint has been chipped. Yeah, you have to check that before you open the plugin and send it back for warranty. Uh, mine, well, I'm not planning to use it in the future, so... I will stay with this and, you know, have a rusty plug-in in a few uh, months. Uh, but yeah, yeah, really my advice is to check it. So uh, uh, let's let's start. And, and the interface of the plug-in, what I, what I experienced is that we can change where we want to have uh, things in the, in the signal chain. We can ch drag around the units, which is uh, pretty, pretty nice. So yeah, um, tape equalizer. So... 15 inches is that, yeah, centimeters is 39. Oh, turn it on, of course, otherwise. There we go. Is this only tape EQ? Almost sounds like it's more than just tape EQ. Oh, 
we got both both standards. We've got NAB and IEC. Uh, one of them is the American standard, the other one is the European standard. NAB is the European standard as far as I know. And I think that this EQ is actually doing more than just EQing. It's also a bit graining, which is good. It's tape, tape simulation stuff. Another thing on here is of course a polarity switch. And a 90 degree face turning. Which is interesting, normally it's 180. So that's interesting. Alright, EQ. Now, the EQ that they're actually simulated is the Curve Bender. This thing, it's now made by Chandler Limited, uh, but it also was an original EQ, but it's very difficult to find a picture of that one, of course. But it's the Curve Bender, and to be honest, I know the Curve Bender because I have used it in Sound Vision Studio a lot. They have a Curve Bender. So let's see what it does. Sounds very open. How's the bass? Not bad, let me make something cool like this. It's not 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 that bad actually. It's not that bad. Now the cool thing about the the TG compressor is how, how how harsh it actually is. From my experience, the, the TG compressor is really is it actually is it a germanium compressor or not? I think I think it is. It's germanium. That's really easy to distinguish it. So let's let's do this. Uh, turn it on. Oh, it's already compressing. Yeah, I'm compressing a lot. I know. I compressing. I'm I'm really compressing a lot. Oh. I'm also... How can I... Oh, wait... Yeah. Okay. Hey. This is not germanium yet. No, modern. Jesus, what a lot of... So it's annoying that I don't have a... I don't have a game for this. Limit. Hey, now we're getting somewhere. Oh, that's actually... That's actually close. That's actually pretty close. But not fully? But that... That harshness that is in there? Yeah. Oh, that. I would love to see that more. Cool. Now we can also make this thing bigger, and from there we can do the uh, the high pass trick. And. Which is literally your face high passing what I'm doing right now, but I don't like it. That actually my main use case for the TG limiters when I used them in Soundvision Studio uh, was 
when I wanted some, some dirty stuff. This compressor is nice. I would love to see it a bit dirtier. It's that, it's, it's got that, that sound that I'm, I'm looking for in TG stuff, but give it a bit more. I want more, more. All right, so that's it. And I'm actually pretty surprised by this plugin. Uh, you know, I was expecting the, the normal Waves stuff from me. I, did I ever review a Waves plugin that was actually good? I don't think so, but yeah, this thing is pretty close to what I'm normally used to hear from uh, from the TG stuff that I know from Soundvision. It's still a bit, it's a bit holding back. I, I would love to see it a bit more extreme, like, like really extreme. Is the Abbey Road TG Mastering Chain snake oil? Well, if you ask me, they are pretty close to simulating the real thing. So it's, it's not really the, the snake oil that you are used to have from Waves. So it's actually pretty good. And if we consider the price of $39, it's super good. And the only thing that's annoying me, I could have expected this already, is the user interface again. It's it's still an analog looking interface that is made. The analog interface is like, like, like this thing. Like an analog interface is made for my my hands, my my fingers to turn them and the buttons to touch and and this and that's what an analog interface is made for. It's not made to be controlled by by this piece of shit. If we now have a a a screen and and a an an an, an you know a visual visual thing with pixels and stuff, why not? give us an image of the frequency response we are actually making. I know that I'm making the frequency response myself. I'm turning the buttons myself. But when I, you know, close this and go to a different project or even work on a different channel and then come back into this plugin, it takes me a lot of time to figure out the exact settings that I did in here. I need to check the, where, where all those buttons are standing. You know, and, and that's an analog problem that can be really easily solved digitally with, with a frequency response curve. Give us it doesn't have to be big, just small, so that we can, you know, in one look can see what is going on. But yeah, a video about user interfaces of plugins is coming really soon. I don't have time to make that right now, so yeah. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked this video, let me know that with a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, then press that thumbs down button and do it two times. Perfect. If you want to support me, there are several ways to support me. One of the ways is by uh, going to my Patreon campaign and pledge a bit. The more you pledge, the more you get in return. Another way to support me is by subscribing to this channel and watching more of my videos. I will link one of them over here. Thanks a lot for watching this one. I'll see you guys again in the next one. Bye bye.